and welcome back to Bologna. We're now talking all things Formula One, and I'm joined, of course, by Charles Leclerc, who finished second in the World Championship this year. And uh, in due course, we're going to be joined, of course, by the world champions Red Bull, Max Verstappen, Checo Perez, Christian Horner. But we're going to start with Charles. Now, there's no rest for you because you were out testing at Fiorano this week. I was, um, but not only. This week has been a bit of a disaster. I've been all over Italy uh, since Monday, so uh, quite tired, but uh, it's okay. Tonight I'm just coming here to take the prize, which is, uh, which is always nice. Now, how good was it to just be back in the car on Wednesday for, for one final session? It feels really strange because it's not been that much of a long break uh, since the last race, but I think mentally you disconnect after the last race. And so it felt like I had to get used to it again. Um, but everything went well. We obviously did uh, loads of um, tire tests, um, which, uh, which went good. So um, it was positive. Now, look, what about the 2022 season as a whole? How much satisfaction do you get from splitting the Red Bull drivers? Oh, it... Not, not too much satisfaction, to be honest. Um, looking back at the season, I, I think it's been a, a good season. And um, especially looking at 2020 and 2021, that have been two, two very difficult uh, years for the team. Um, it wasn't a given that we will do such of a step forward and, uh, and finish second in the Drivers' Championship and also second in the Constructors' Championship. So of that, I'm, I'm happy. But then, obviously, looking a bit more into, um, into the season closely, uh, there's been the middle part of the season that has been very frustrating, where we didn't really put everything together coming the Sunday, and that was uh, that was frustrating. So mixed uh, mixed feelings about this season, but um, but yeah, second place is is quite good. I just hope it is a, um, a step forward, and then for ne for and that for next year we can do a, another step forward. In that middle bit of the season that you've just described, how difficult was it for you just to keep your frustrations under control? Um, I think in the heat of the moment and in the heat of the season, races are coming quite quickly. So um, I think it's it's okay. It's just at the end of the season, then you look back at the season and you and you feel feel it a bit more. But uh, but during the season, it wasn't that that difficult. What about the F175? Um, nine pole positions would suggest it was a very quick racing car. Just talk us talk us through the strengths of that car first of all. Well, I think with new tyres, low fuel, it was a, it was a really, really strong car. Uh, the feeling was really, really good. We were struggling a little bit more coming the Sunday, especially with tyre degradation, struggling to put the, um, the car in the, right, um, in the right place for it to be nice on tyres. And uh, we've paid the price quite often coming the Sunday. But um, yeah, a very, very fast car the Saturday, a bit more difficult to understand the Sunday. But you still took three wins. And I was going to ask you, which was your best, your best victory? My best one? Um, probably Austria. Um, it also felt particularly good after the uh, previous races that didn't uh, go too much our way. So uh, Austria was, uh, was a really good one. We had a very good time management, a very good pace from the first lap to the last one. Um, so it felt, it felt good. So let's throw it forward, uh, 2023. Uh, do you think the team can put together a season-long challenge for the world title? Well, this is the, this is the goal. Um, yes, we, we, we are all working towards that direction. Um, obviously, the last few weeks have been um, a bit difficult for the team, and we are in a transition um, time at the moment. But, um, yeah, on that, I have the full trust on of uh, Benedetto and, and John to take the, to take the right decision. Um, but I am sure that we, um, yeah, that 2023 will be another step forward and hopefully get closer to the, to the goal that we want, the, uh, that we all want in the team, which is to be, to be world champion. Can I just get your reaction to the news that Mattia Bonotto will no longer be at Ferrari next year? When, when you heard, how did you feel? Yeah, Mattia um, called me to announce that that, that he will uh, he will stop, um, which uh, I respect his decision, um, and I, I can only thank him. Obviously, he has believed in me right from the start. He extended me 
with a very, very long contract. Um, and, and before being team principal, he was also inside the, the Scuderia for many, many years. And he has contributed to, to the success that the team had um, in, the, in, the, in the past years. So uh, I, I wish him the best. And, uh, and obviously now it's up to us to, to focus on, on the future, try and, and take the, the right choices um, in order to, um, yeah, to be a bit more of a challenge uh, to Red Bull next year. Who would you like to see take over? Do you have a, do you have a short list? No, and I won't comment that. Um, <laughs> but, uh, and, and obviously, it's also not my, my decision. John and, and Benedetto um, yeah, are, are going to take the decision. And um, we are just trying and to focus our job on the simulator with the team in order to have the best race car possible for, uh, for next year. Um, but the decision will, will be done uh, by, by them. All right, Charles. Many thanks. Uh, let's open this to the floor. I think we'll start with Dieter. Thanks, Tom. Um, hi, Charles. Um, Dieter Rankin Racing News 365. When, when there's a change of team principal, we normally hear the story about we're starting a three-year program, a three-year journey, we want to become champions. Are you concerned that this could be the case again now, the new uh, team principal coming in? Obviously, he's going to look at running things his way. That takes time to bed in, etc. Um, well, to be honest, I don't know because from my own experience, I've never had a, a team principal change um, during um, when I was racing for, for the same team. Um, it will probably require a little bit of time for the team principal to get at ease with uh, the, the system and with, with Ferrari because it's obviously a, a huge team. Um, but I believe that if it's um, done the right way, I, I don't think we'll suffer any um, of it on, on the track. So I, I'm pretty sure it will be a, a smooth transition. Thank you, Shal. Yep, another one. Daniel Esparici, Corriere della Sera. Shal, um, talking about the next year, why are you confident? What do you see of good about the new car is coming and uh, about the team? Because the team is in transition, but the basis of new car and uh, everything has been put it by Mattia. Well, I mean, um, I am confident because we are doing quite a lot of work at the simulator that we've been working extremely hard in the past year to try and understand what were the weaknesses of this car in order to get better for, for next year's car. Um, obviously, there's also Matthias still um, um, at the factory at the moment working and trying to help the team to get ready for 2023. And again, I believe that if the transition is done in the right way, we shouldn't uh, suffer too much. And um, and I also think that after the 2021 season where we've been working uh, very well and resetted a little bit from, the, uh, from 2020, that was a difficult season. We have been working in the right direction and in the right way. And this uh, gives me the confidence uh, that we'll have a competitive car for 2023. Charles, the, the new rules for this season certainly closed up the grid, but it was still a two-horse race at the front. Are you expecting a Mercedes or maybe another team to join you guys at the front next year? Um, I, I do believe that Mercedes will be in the fight. Another team, I haven't seen signs yet maybe to, uh, to believe that uh, another team will join uh, the, the top three, but, um, but Mercedes will definitely be, um, uh, be there next year with, uh, with a very strong car. We've seen how much they've improved from the first race to the last race. I think they understood where they went... Uh, uh, what they did wrong, and uh, this is normally the sign that it will go better. So um, hopefully it will be a three-team uh, team fight next year. You'd relish that. Sorry? You'd relish that. You'd enjoy more, more cars fighting at the front. Oh, of course, yeah. uh, but not only me. I think everybody. I think uh, more cars are involved, and the closer the cars are, uh, the happier the drivers are, because um, that's when it gets uh, interesting. Lovely. Thank you. We've got time for one more. Yep, Luke. Uh, Luke Smith from Oss, uh, Charles, I know you said it's not your decision in terms of who takes over at the team, but one name that has been linked with the role is Frederick Vassa. You know him from your time at, at Sauber. Do you think that he would do a good job leading Ferrari? Do you think he'd be a good fit for the role? I mean, Ferrari is a very uh, different team to any other teams. Uh, I can only comment on my experience with Fred, which uh, obviously has been... Uh, um, good. Uh, I've been working with Fred already from the junior categories where he has believed in me and, um, and we've always had a good relationship. But apart from that, that obviously this shouldn't influence any of the, of the decisions. Um, he has always been very uh, straightforward, very honest. Um, 
and this is something that I liked from, from Fed. Whether it will be him or not, I, I don't know. Um, and, uh, and we'll see hopefully in the, um, in the next few months. All right. Charles, we're going to have to leave it there. Look, many congratulations. I know a little bit of frustration, but those nine poles, three wins, second in the World Championship. Ladies and gentlemen.